Well, hey there, YouTube. Welcome to another High Guardian 3 Siege. Uh, today we have Built Not Bot and Team Murica for our opponents. I uh, did the whole siege off stream because I was busy that day with real life stuff. So uh, we get to comment the whole, commentate the whole thing for YouTube. Up first, we have Molong Molly Savannah. Um, the team that I'm bringing, I feel like is not. It's not as safe against this as it is against the Fuki version. My thinking was, hey, I've got will runes on my wind monsters, so turn one's probably okay. And then after turn one, I'll have the Savannah controlled with bombs until it's dead, so it's not going to be that big of an issue. Um, obviously, I forgot that I was going to be outspeeding with my Ciara, because my Ciara is faster than I would expect any defense Savannah without a speed leader to be. So it's like plus 140 something. Um, so that wasn't great because I got defense broken on my CR turn one, but it turned out okay because our Degora is actually not high resistance. He's just like high HP and defense with uh, enough speed to actually be able to take turns. So he got defense broken too. So that's nice. So that worked out okay. Um, so my goal here is just deal with the Savannah because the Savannah is obviously scary and then the other monsters are not scary because my team tanks and counters them very well. So it, it works out pretty well. Uh, turn one could have gone poorly if the Savannah like landed defense break on Ciara, but not on Degora and then violent proc on the Ciara. But I think it was all right. Um, probably should have used HP leader for this one. If I had if I had stopped to think about the fact that I was definitely going to outspeed with my Ciara and not have will runes. But that's one of those things that you think about when you're editing the YouTube video. Normally, I don't use HP leader in this team because my Ciara is like speed tuned so that with her speed leader, she's at a certain speed tick. If I used HP leader, she would have like 25 wasted speed, which could be other stats on her runes. So I might rerune her, but I actually I probably won't because I use Ciara leader in other offense teams. So ignore that. I don't know if uh, dropping her a speed tick is worth getting the Chasun leader. But, like, I mean, I haven't lost with this team, so I don't really think I need to be making changes to it yet. Oh, also, this defense is Menchkiss, my, my former guildie from Exile Mercs. So, hello. I think I hit her a couple times in this video. Because some of my old guildies went over to Team Murica. Hope they're having a good time over there. Is Molly stalling us? What else can I talk about? How do we fill the time while we wait to kill this Molly? Siege tournament's coming up. Uh, three weeks. So, you only have three more Second Awakened monsters you can build to prepare for the tournament. I know it's on my mind. Oh, I've got an embarrassing story I can tell. Uh, over the weekend this past weekend, I was going to like build the Wind Totemist and maybe a couple other things. But I was too busy playing another video game, uh, New World, that I've been addic addicted to lately. And I accidentally let my double experience booster expire in my Summoner's War inbox without using it. So that kind of feels bad. <laughs> so now I have to get another double experience booster and uh, maybe build the Wind Totemist and a couple other things for like the Siege Tournament offense stuff. Maybe this weekend or next weekend. We'll see. I don't know, I'm just thinking about what kind of monsters I might need for the Siege Tournament. It's kind of to the point where it's time to start guessing what people are going to run. Alright, Molly died. We stalled long enough. What's next? Oh, it's Mench again. Bullying my old guildie. Uh, so, I think that this is probably not a surprising team for anybody. It's tracked to Lulu Windy. We've seen it before against Carcano, Praha, Tyrannus. I'm just going to kill the Praha as many times as I have to. I, I guess I chose to stun the Carcano there. I, I respect Mench's runes, you know? Uh, she's got a really solid account, so... I, gotta, I don't want to be too careless fighting this one.
looks like the uh, Tyrannus might be built more um, kind of all around bruiser and not very high damage though. Judging by that damage on my Lulu there. I mean, my Lulu does run a 22% wind reduction artifact basically all the time now. It's 22% wind reduction, 8% water reduction is the artifact that I use on every single one of my Lulus. But still, that uh, the Druid did not hit very hard. So it's probably more like a, a higher HP type all around build. Alrighty, Carcano's down. Get the stun on the druid. Anything to speed up the fight is good. Carcano's back now. Now he's gone again. Thrilling commentary by Howdy Man. Alright, we got through another one. Up next, oh, we have the, uh... This version. Uh, I'm still using this offense. I think I've lost twice with this offense. Maybe I shouldn't still be using it, but one of those times was 100% my own misplay, and I didn't... I, I deserved to lose, but not because of the team that I brought. It was because I didn't have my brain turned on. That was the time that I forgot, that I didn't realize that Molong never used skill 3, and I let my Lulu get defense broken and killed. This time, I do understand that Molong has not used skill 3. I'm paying more attention. I feel like... The, part of the benefit of a siege that I don't stream is that I can pay a lot more attention to the fights. So hopefully we won't see too many misplays in this one because I am uh, paying more attention to the fights. All right. My uh, Tessarian is trying very hard. Gets a couple violent procs. So that one worked well. I'm definitely going to have to find some new runes for my Ethna before the tournament happens because the my Ethna runes are pretty bad right now. I don't know if I'll keep her on despair. Maybe I'll find like a violent set for her. Up next, another one of these things. So I outspeed his Savannah, so I strip the will off so that I can get my Oblivion on it because I want to kill the Savannah first. Uh, I don't get my Oblivion, which is sad. That's okay. Uh, we were faster, so we are able to reduce his attack bars. I land the defense break on the Molly, so I hit the Molly with my Tessarian. It heals itself. I don't know if that's the best play. I don't know, a lot of times when I fight these teams, I do end up killing Molly first, and it always feels really easy as soon as Molly dies. I feel like always leaving Molly for last is like a bit of a trap, because Molly makes the fight so much more annoying. If you can just kill if you can kill Molly early, it just gets so much easier. But I don't know. I don't have any, any specific kill order for these fights still. I just kinda play it as we, we do it live as they say. Whatever it looks like it might be the best idea at the time. But I'm definitely not that scared of a Mo Long when I have essentially 50% damage reduction with Tessarian's passive plus his artifact. Um, although it should be noted that when I put that slow debuff on Mo Long, I lose Tessarian's passive, right? Because Tessarian only reduces damage if they don't have a harmful effect on them. So I should probably be more mindful of that and uh, not put slow on the Molong. But it didn't matter. We're fine. All right, Mytasarian's landing his dots, but not his oblivions. My Savannah is still on a pretty bad rune set as well. I just have not taken the time to re-rune some of my offense monsters. Like, Dasarian's good. Lulu's great. I love the runes on those monsters. 
But like Savannah was just kind of sitting around that I didn't really specifically build her for offense, same as Ethna. I should probably redo those. Another Molong Savannah team. Uh, we're bringing a Leo this time. As, as you're aware, I'm sure Leo is pretty good against Savannah. Uh, we have a Laika. Laika can tank the Molong decently well. I mean, the Molong skill 2 chunks Laika, right? It gets kind of scary sometimes. Uh, but I think we'll be okay. We have Lulu, obviously, insane healing. So we should be all right with that. Um, our Laika's on destroy. So we do have destroy here if we need it for like a long fight. A lot of the time I come into these fights thinking, okay, cool, I've got my destroy set. I'm going to be fine because we'll, you know, we'll destroy their, their HP. And it'll be good. And then I realize when I actually play the fight that it's not a destroy fight. <laughs> like I'm, I'm always severely underestimating the damage that my uh, dragon knights are going to put out. And it's like, why was I thinking this was a destroy fight when I'm just going to kill him with damage? Uh, so we dismount Savannah. Dismounting Savannah, you know, removes some of that defense break chance. Uh, because I don't want to get, like, my Lulu defense broken into a Molong skill 3. Like, that's kind of one of the ways to, to lose this offense. So I'm going to dismount Savannah, and then I'm going to leave her alone. I'm going to take her defense break away, and then I'm just going to go ahead and kill his reviver next. Never mind, I'm attacking the Molong. I think I'm still thinking about how I can lose and like Molong uh, defense break on Laika into skill two, which like does, you know, 70% of Laika's health is a scary thing. So I think I'm trying to destroy the Molong HP here. It's probably not needed. I'm probably being overly scared. Now I'm going after the fish. See, that, that, there's exactly the combo that I said I was afraid of with Mo Long. Took my Leica down to like 30%, and then of course I vampired it back up in a single hit on the uh, on the mermaid there. My, my Leica's Vampire Destroy. I think that's probably the best build for your siege offense, Leica. Destroy wins are great because it means you can bring it into Molly teams and you can 1v1 a Molly. Up next, Hertay at Vigor Triana. This is like the only offense you've ever seen me use against this defense. If you watch my videos regularly, uh, it typically wins, so I keep doing it. I have a light monster, so the Hertay is not going to go after my twins and steal their stats. I have an attack buff, and then I just plow through the Hertay as soon as possible. Um, just because Hertay, if he lives past like turn three, can become an incredibly scary monster with like, you know, 8,000 defense that you can never kill. That number is an exaggeration, but you know, like late, late game hurt it is not a fun thing to fight against. So we kill him first, get him out of the way and we can fight more normal monsters like Vigor and Triana. Hooray, we've succeeded. Up next, we have the uh, the Kraka team. Uh, this is the fight where I was started questioning Kraka's AI. So so count along with me. Kraka used skill one on her first turn. Um, on her second turn, she's gonna use skill one. That's exciting. Kraka's skill two is a strip and a defense break, which you know is pretty good against all the buffs that I have, and my one defense breakable monster. Uh, so for Kraka's third turn, she's gonna go ahead and skill one. That's pretty cool. Cool transmog on the Kraken, by the way. Looking nice. I like her hat. She's got a good hat. For her fourth turn, she's gonna go ahead and skill one me. Uh, you know, just getting that uh, like that little slice action in there. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. For her fifth turn, she's gonna go ahead and skill one me, which is nice. You know. She's just really, really bringing it to my attractor. Okay, for her sixth turn, she's skill twos. Uh, she she missed the important strip, and then, uh, so that was unfortunate. And then she died, so. Um, 
crack at AI. For me, apparently, uh, skill one five times and then die. It is crack at AI. <laughs> Go ahead and put this one on fast forward. We, we all know how this ends, right? It's Tractor Lulu Windy against Arcano Triana. I feel like we've seen this before. Uh, so I'm I basically just try to find out which one's squishier and kill that these days. The so Carcano was squishier, so I killed him first, and then I pressed the auto button, which is why you can see our awesome Elvis tractor using his taunt ability. He actually landed taunt both times he used it. That's pretty cool. It's only like 50% activation. What do we got next? Carcano Iris Vigor. This feels like one of those offense, one of those defenses that's like, it, it kind of feels like it's so old that you don't really remember it. It's like, it's so old that it's new. It's like, I'm sure I've seen this before. It's just been so long that I forget how I fought against it. Uh, but what I did here is I brought a Malite because Malite's typically pretty good, especially against Iris teams. Uh, Elusia, also a very strong monster against Iris. Because you can always just, you know, control the Iris and stop her from stunning and stripping and healing. Um, at that particular moment, I went ahead and slept the Vigor because it seemed like the most value play on that turn. Given how many Despair stuns this Iris is landing, that might have not been a good choice. I probably should have just done what I brought Elusia here to do and... You know, put the iris to sleep. His man, does she land a lot of despair stuns in this fight? Fortunately, our team is very tanky. We're working on his vigor, and uh, a big reason for that is that my vigor's on destroy, and my malite's on destroy, and, uh, you know, there's only one monster on his side that scales with HP as far as damage goes, so destroying the Vigor is pretty important. Or pretty useful, I should say. Kind of reduces the threat to my team as the fight goes on. Good thing that Malite can't be stunned while he's in uh, stone form, because this Iris would uh, just be stunning my whole team, I guess. Yes. She, she successfully stuns two-thirds of my team a lot in this fight. Alright, Vigor went down to the Malite passive. Iris went down. Honestly, Malite just killed the whole team. The other, I don't know why I brought three monsters. The other two were just stunned the whole time. Uh, Carcano Clara Fuki. So I like Carcano Lulu Triana. It has, you know, the, the right element damage to kill their team plus a lot of redundant support for him. Um, it gets kind of awkward in a case like this fight right here, where the AoE damage put my Carcano to the lowest health on the team immediately, and then he gets defense broken, which is like kind of expected. It's kind of how you expect the fight to go, but we have enough redundancy with like the double cleansers, plus the Triana passive and the constant healing, plus Carcano's stance that I still think this offense is fine. Um, we just have to basically you just kill whatever you can. Fuki is usually going to be the lowest health enemy monster because he reduces his own health. So you probably have to kill Fuki first, or you're at least going to be landing your defense break on him. If his if their Carcano is not in stance, I think you can probably like shoot him and try to get him lowest health so you can follow up and kill him because Carcano is the really scary monster here. But, you know, whatever whatever you got to do to just get through the fight here. Uh, I obviously am not outspeeding these defenses because my swift sets are horrible. And if the Clara's on swift, I probably just lose. So I use slower teams. Uh, this one, I, I do... I made a pretty big mistake here. Um, the mistake that I made here was that I didn't move the Carcano runes. So the other Carcano that we just used is a crit damage Carcano. This Carcano is a much tankier Carcano uh, that is not on crit damage. 
So we fail to kill his Fuki because we do way less damage than the other one. And he gets some procs on our Triana. Um, so we're in a pretty, pretty rough spot where we each have a Carcano plus support. And we kind of play this game where, you know, can we crit? I mean, I, I can crit apparently because I have high crit rate, but I don't have damage because this is a tankier version of Carcano. All right, I glance, he crits, he procs into stance. Uh, Despair Clara on this one gets the strip into Despair stun. His Carcano misses a crit that felt nice, but then we immediately get stunned. I go into stance there because I'm low damage. I, I would have to get the 30% crit in order to kill him. I thought if I went into stance, I'd probably survive for the next turn, but he just did barely enough damage to kill me. Um, big crit on my Lulu here, and things are looking rough. I skill won this Carcano. I'm desperate to get that thing dead. Um, I, I Although, I, I'll skill two myself there because immunity and the, the fat heal is nice. Skill one him again. I think I had skill three available, but I was just like, if I kill the Carcano, I win the fight. I just got to get that thing down. So we do get the Carcano down. Now we're up against this Despair Clara. It looks like she's on additional damage artifacts because those skill ones are doing more than 2,000 on my wind monster. I guess they're doing like 1,700 glancing. I don't know. Probably still additional damage on the on the Clara here. But as soon as that Carcano goes down, we're safe, right? Like, like you'd have, it would have to be an insane string of despair stuns for this Clara to actually kill my Lulu. And I don't think it's going to happen. In fact, I was there, and I can tell you that it didn't happen. Uh, so that's a pretty, pretty rough fight. So yeah, if my Carcano was the crit damage runes and not the tank runes, we probably would have just killed his uh, Uki, and then we wouldn't have lost our Triana, and then we would have had a much more enjoyable fight. So yeah, crit damage Carcano for offense is a good choice. Um, that is everything. That's the end of the siege. That's 10 wins. I forgot to screenshot my 10 win chat message, but we did do the 10 wins this time. And uh, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.